Captain Provost, uh, your graces, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, actually brothers and sisters. Uh, it is a very wonderful thing to stand here and look around and see so many whose faces I know so well, uh, who I count as comrades, brothers and sisters in the long and arduous business of being Christian. As well as that, however, I see uh, quite a number whose acquaintance I've only just made. My first duty today is to say particularly to the local committee uh, who have um, arranged for GAFCON to take place here, how very, very grateful we are to you for the extraordinary amount of work you've done, for the skill with which you've done it, uh, and for the uh, endless hours and time you've put into this. I might say uh, with uh, the High Commissioner uh, how much this has enhanced, if I can say so, and will enhance the reputation of Kenya and Nairobi. You have been through two horrendous incidents with the fire at the airport and of course this last, last tragedy. Uh, you have continued on faithfully and steadfastly. You've, uh, you've looked again at the security, for example, I know that. Uh, but you have been so faithful uh, in doing all this. Uh, we will not be adequately able to thank you but uh, please accept these words as our deepest thanks to you for making this great convention possible. Can I also say that I didn't think it would be possible until I walked into the Trinity Centre. And then I knew, since we could never build that centre in Sydney, uh, I knew I was in the presence of people who could run a convention and do it well. So I want to leave the rest of us in applause for the local committee. Your Grace, uh, the Primate of Kenya, we want to thank you. Uh, it is not an easy thing to, uh, to extend an invitation to uh, hundreds and hundreds of people to come. Uh, my whole aim in Sydney, I have to say, was to avoid the General Synod occurring ever in Sydney and always have it somewhere else. I know what it's like, and that was nothing compared to having GAF gone here. So again, and very publicly, I want to say how grateful we are to you and today, of course, I want to thank you on behalf of all your guests for this magnificent meal uh, that you and uh, Mama Rhoda have been hosting for us. And I, I want to say how grateful we are, but also I want to assure you publicly that uh, you are loved. You are deeply loved, both here in Kenya, but also around the world. And we, uh, we, we are love and honour you for all that you've done for us. Thank you. Amen. Uh, I've also been asked to say just a few words about GAFCON. Uh, one of the reasons why it's so appropriate to be here for GAFCON this week is uh, that it was born in Nairobi, room 12, 1216 of the Hilton Hotel to be exact. Well, I have to check my records, but I think it was 1216. A number of people sitting here today were present at that meeting. Uh, and it, it was intentionally held here in Kenya the leader of the meeting, of course, was uh, Archbishop Akinola, and I can remember Archbishop Oko at his right. And Archbishop Oko's great contribution to the meeting, amongst others, was to tell us that the word GAFCON was the word we should have. So I think it was you, sir, I can't see you, but uh, I think it was you, sir, who gave us the word GAFCON. And for that, we're very grateful, because it's the Global Anglican Future Conference, which, uh, which we decided on. Now, a number of the folk uh, here today were present at that uh, how little we could have guessed that we would be back here five years later and asking ourselves what's been accomplished. I heard earlier today that uh, Archbishop Obakawa said that uh, in a sense the crisis has passed and that's true because you can't live in a state of crisis. The crisis having been passed, the results however are permanent or at least permanent for the time being if I can put it like that. Something has happened with grave consequences which now go on and what indeed has happened and why? Uh, well, the uh, Genesis of Gafcon, as you know, was the authority of Scripture. Is the Word of God the Word of God? Long ago, even before Gafcon, Bishop Naziali said to me that the debate we were having was about the clarity of Scripture. I'll never forget him saying that. And I thought, yes, he's right, of course. Is the Bible the Bible for everybody that all can read, that a way in which it, it, uh, it interprets itself? Is it the Bible for the lay people? as much as it is the Bible for the clergy and anyone else. And this was Bishop Naziali's point, that we can read the Bible too. 
and we can understand what it's saying to us. And uh, uh, the clarity of the scriptures, particularly in the area of human sexuality, which is so important for our identity, uh, means that we believe that we know, always ready to look again, but we, when we look again, the same message appears, that human sexual expression needs to occur within the bonds of marriage between a man and a woman. And anything else is unholy matrimony, if you like. Now, it's those great issues, aren't they? The, the, the Bible and our obedience to the Bible, which gave us the explosion, if you like, which occurred at GAFCON. Since then, uh, I see GAFCON, and it's interesting you occasionally hear what people say about GAFCON and the FCA, and it's not always uh, very nice, it's very far, it is often far from accurate. Uh, I often hear it said it's a schismatic movement, which is very funny considering how many Anglicans are involved in it. It's a schismatic movement, and I often hear that it's, uh, that it's, um, it's homophobic, of course, and all the other uh, terms of abuse that it's so popular to throw. I want to say to you um, that the uh, GAFCON movement is a movement for unity. I remember the Saturday night after GAFCON 1, we gathered in the room, the primates gathered there, I gathered as the boy in the room, uh, and the discussion was held, and I think it was I, but someone asked the question, are we leaving the Anglican Communion? And immediately all said, no, we are not leaving the Anglican Communion, that is not the intention. We will never do that. But our intention is to gather up the fragments of the Anglican Communion. And what GAFCON has done, particularly in North America, has been to gather up the fragments and to unite and to make sure that our beloved friends, like Archbishop Bob, Bob Duncan here today, our beloved friends are kept and recognised as the authentic, true Anglicans that they are. And they don't have to pretend to be something else. And of course it's not only the North Americans, but others as well. And this is going to happen in other places around the Communion. Indeed it has begun to happen in other places around the Communion, where to stand for biblical truth, is going to cost you very, very dearly indeed, as it has cost our brothers here. And then you will have to ask yourself, who are our friends? Who will stand with us? And GAFCON is a way of delivering friendship. It's a way of delivering unity. It's a way of making sure that, to quote the immortal words of a Nigerian bishop at our last meeting in London, now we know we're not alone. I've never forgotten him saying that. That's GAFCON. Now we know. We're not alone. Now, uh, as we heard this morning, the Anglican Communion, 21st century, is going to be looked very, very different from the Anglican Communion that began the 21st century. That's obvious. Indeed, it's not only going to look different, it is different. It's already different. The events of 2008, little did we know it, was the birth of something new in the Anglican Communion. And in a sense, Gafcon is called, I believe, to model what a communion could be. A different communion. Uh, I like to put it this way, that the British Empire is dead and the British Commonwealth of Nations has followed. <laughs> there's, a, there's a different partnership, a different equality between the partners now. A bringing together of bishops, laity and clergy all together in a great conference uh, where all may play their part. And a way of modelling and being the Anglican communion for the sake of the whole gospel, for Christ and the gospel, in a way which will uh, bring us all, to bring our gifts to bear for the sake of one another. That's a great picture. And I believe in microcosm, this is what the FCA movement is already and has begun to be. Here is when 1300, uh, now, last night it was 1352, this morning it was 1348. And one baby from Nigeria, I believe, a <laughs> gathering in Nairobi. 1352. Anglican Christians gathering here in Nairobi for a week in which we are going to seek, according to Archbishop Wabakala, we are going to seek the glory of God. Our prayer is that we may see the glory of God in this week together and go home changed. We're going to hear about the East African revival. We're going to be challenged by it. We from the West are going to be deeply challenged about the East African revival. We're going to hear about the persecuted church. We're going to hear from each other. We're going to minister to each other. 
We're going to hear the Word of God together and sit underneath the teaching of the Word of God. It is, I believe, and we're going to sing the praises of God and uh, worship together. It is, I believe, going to be a, an extraordinary week. Not just a sort of missions conference, which is something I know Bob Duncan was worried about, but it's an ecclesial conference. It's more than that. Oh, you mean I've learned something from you? <laughs> Archbishop Duncan is always hoping I'm going to learn something from him. <laughs> and I have. It is more than that's a, a conference. It's more than that. Now, uh, we are deeply in prayer. Archbishop Obakala told us to be in prayer that uh, we will see the glory of God. And for my part, I've asked that we will see that, that the Lord will maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Because unity is what we're about. Uh, now, that's the, uh, uh, that's the genesis of FCA GAFCON, and I, I've talked about its meaning. And just to conclude by saying it has two great purposes. First of all, to recognise and authenticate Anglicans, who for no fault of their own, in a stand for biblical truth, have become disaffiliated from their own denomination or original church. To gather up the fragments of Christ's church, and to maintain them in unity. And then secondly, to bring together Anglicans from all around the world, they're not the only Anglicans, of course, that would be nonsense, but to get, bring together Anglicans from all around the world to release the energy of the Anglican communion for the sake of the mission of the gospel, the sovereignty of God's word, the glory of God's name, and the good of God's people. Dear brothers and sisters, as we're here today enjoying this wonderful occasion together, let's remember what's drawn us together, the glory of God. And let us join in prayer that we will indeed see the glory of God this week in Nairobi. Yeah.